Hey there everybody and welcome back to more Sword of Ateria. So it seems we've unlocked the rest of the options here in the menu and I would say that if this was your first time playing definitely look into doing the training but since this isn't my first rodeo instead we're gonna go ahead and spend some of our hard-earned Ateria which are the orbs we've been collecting to make items. Now there are some very minor RPG elements to the game where we can build up our character's life, their strength, and even though it's oddly worded, their sapience, which increases their equipment slots. Now for right now, Almira does have an additional equipment slot, and if you're wondering what type of equipment we could put on, well, if we scroll further down, you see that we can add elemental factors to our attacks, though they will decrease the overall attack power we can actually do. And, well, there are a lot of other things that we can put on, but we really shouldn't be worrying about those for right now, because if you might recall, Feel is a little bit underpowered in the stats department. So I think, especially considering how little Ateria we have, well, we should probably just go ahead and work up Feel. Yeah, it may not seem like we have a lot of Ateria for right now, but we can definitely fix that in the upcoming chapter. And if we had any items that we want to sell, we could, though we'd only get back about half of their actual value. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out that next stage. So while the game does want to warn us that the enemy AI will primarily be trying to focus on feel, overall Chapter 3 is just a tiny bit easier, if only because, as opposed to the previous chapter, we now are traveling with our full party, and well, that not only means that we have an additional person attacking for us, but if you might have noticed from the stat screen, Leon actually has higher stats than both Almira and Feel. Almost combined. Here we go. Now, even though this is really the first stage without basic tutorials, the game still wants to make sure that uh, we can get accustomed to having a third party member going around in the background. And it starts us off with 
it's a pretty basic arena. It's pretty small. And all the enemies we're going to be facing right now are ones we've faced before. Though in this final wave here, we do get introduced to a, a mildly new type of frogman. You can see him there with the shield. Sadly, the shield does not really stand up to getting knocked around with a death blow, but we will be seeing more of him later and possibly his great defensive abilities. I'm here! Leon! Alright, here we go! And yeah, I am still a little bit rusty at the whole juggling thing, but I, I promise things will get better. Though, sadly, yeah, that starting arena is not really indicative of how the rest of the level will be set up. More often than not, we'll be given these much more large and sprawling arenas with, you know, different sets of enemies just kind of chilling about, waiting for us to come smack them with our sword. And sometimes, if we're especially lucky, we can maybe knock the enemy towards those group of enemies and get a nice juggle death blow combination going. Especially since you might not have noticed it before, but after the initial spin from our death blow, it does send out a shock wave, which, well, if an enemy is already low enough on health, will cause them to go flying back along with just the initial spin attack. I'm here. Right away, Leon. That means that we'll have plenty of opportunities to send our highly advanced AI swinging for the fences to go juggle the enemies back towards us. Here we go! Because it might not have been immediately noticeable, but yeah, I have been getting a lot more death blows than I did on the previous level. And even though it might not seem like it, that's mostly due to the fact of having Leon here. Yeah, by, by having him here, the tension gauge will build up even quicker, because obviously we're having an additional person doing the juggling. And not only that, by having more and more juggles going on, you might notice that well, text pops up on the screen saying that we quote unquote linked an attack. And that's whenever, you know, a juggle is consistently gotten between two people. And the higher that link number is, the quicker the tension meter goes up. So the game really wants to motivate you and reward you for keeping those juggles going. So we just have one sneaky enemy that probably got knocked senseless down here, but easy enough to dispatch. And as we are a little bit low on health, there is a convenient chest over here holding a healing item for us. Still, nothing too difficult, though you might notice there is a much larger enemy waiting in the wings back there. We'll be dealing with him soon enough. Leon! All right, Almira. Got it. Looks like Almira got a little bit headstrong herself and decided to go aggro him. Yeah, that larger gentleman there. Obviously has not only more health, but he's also carrying a shield, so he can defend against our attacks. And he also has a number of additional abilities, such as a shield charge and an evasive dodge. But still not ultimately too difficult, though, to give you a little bit of insight into my own strategy. Normally what I try to do is I try to work up my tension gauge with any smaller enemies nearby. And then, I focus on the larger enemy by using a death blow. That way, it won't so much kill the enemy, but it will knock them back, get them off their feet, and hopefully lead to them being further juggled, so, well, as long as they're not on their feet, they won't ever really be a threat. But with that acrobatic display, maybe we can talk a little bit more, well, about the odd naming convention of the enemies. I'm not sure if maybe you've been noticing at the upper left-hand corner, but the enemies do have an additional health bar, and reveals that they all have their own unique names. 
These baseline enemies called Volo Ansa. Here we go! Well, their names aren't really indicative of well, any characteristic they have at all. As far as I could tell from my uh, my Google Translate skills, Volo Anso seems to be some weird mixture of Italian and Latin, and it seems to be, and I don't know why, it seems to be Flight Loop. An Ansa seems, as far as I can tell, and I might be wrong, sorry Italian viewers out there, I think it means flight, but it's... It's honestly a bit hard to say. I I have read in a couple of uh, review sites, uh, EGM articles and things like that from you know the time this game was released that I guess there was some translation errors and things like that. I thought that just meant maybe some misplaced words in the translation. But at this point I'm thinking that well it might reach farther than that because well, in all honesty most of the enemy names are nonsensical? Like, uh, I, I know there are times when Japanese games will sometimes, you know, romanticize things or try to adapt foreign ideas just because, like how sometimes they'll include astrological symbols for no particular reason, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I think there are a few enemy names that do make vague sense, but not many. Over here. All right. Also, you'll see that occasionally, if an enemy horde has been pretty much whittled down to its weakest enemy, occasionally that enemy will decide to say fuck it and just run for the hills. That's it's never really a detriment. Usually the enemies that are running away aren't really worth that much at area. And, well, it's good just to keep the flow of the game going. And speaking of flow, we have... Well, we've gotten to the first forking path in our linear journey through this dusty trail. But, as with pretty much every pathway we've come to. First, we are going to have to kill all the enemies. And I am very proud to say, this set of enemies got pretty fucked up. Now, it may seem like I'm just spamming death blows willy-nilly. And truth be told, I kinda am. But usually, when you have a big enough pack of enemies, and your links have been built up high enough, usually just swinging for the fences with death blows pretty much means you can just consistently get death blows over and over again. But yeah, if we uh, go down this particular path here, we are greeted by a nasty ambush. Those larger enemies with the lances are... And they're a very large problem at this point in the game, just because they are very defensive and they have super long range. But there is a somewhat important reason to come down this way. And it's not just to get some very easy orbs. I'm here! Leon! Because I think, yeah, pretty much at this point, we've already doubled the amount of Ateria we got before, but more importantly, in that chest, we find our collectible for the level. But with that collectible collected, we can now head towards the boss. Say hello to service. Probably your first real roadblock in the game, and what I would probably call well, the first real boss. That is incredible. Oh, no. Regular attacks don't even put a dent in it. As Elmira states, our regular attacks don't seem to be doing well. Fuck all of this guy. 
What? Another weapon? And yeah, even though we managed to destroy his initial club, he managed to pull another one out of the earth with his magical earth abilities. And, well, you might have already noticed, but not only can we target service, but we can also target the little bits of rock that break off of him. And this is pretty much the key strategy for fighting him, and pretty much all bosses, and that's using some secondary object to build up our tension gauge, and then using our built-up tension to perform a death blow on the boss. Stop me! Now this really goes into testing the player's ability at this point to not only master juggles, but also to master targeting in general, because, well, you don't really want to waste a death blow on that rock. Well, for one thing, you want to keep the rock alive long enough to where you can juggle it more, but also, well, you're probably going to end up wasting a lot of attack power on a rock that's not beating the hell out of you. Though I really showed that particular rock who was boss. Still, the main problem with service at this point is just the fact that he does an insane amount of damage. You can see that even against Leon, he pretty much took out a third of his health with a club swing. Now that's not to say that you die whenever you lose all your health. Instead, you're put in this handicapped state where you have to mash out X to try to refill your life. Though, if all three of your party members enter that state, it is a game over. And depending on where you are, you might have to restart the entire stage of it. But, with enough tenacity and enough practice, you should be able to kill service pretty easily. With that, we had a pretty successful run, managing to pull out a B, mostly due to all the deaths we suffered, but hopefully you will join me next time as we continue on our journey to try to find where they took Dorothy.